My name is Margaret. I'm a historical customer and textile conservator in training. And I've had a really bad week. I intended to come back for this new year, you know, coming out, swinging, having some great content. And I took some time off to be with my family at home, came back, ready to go, and then life smacked me across the face. So today I just wanted to do something that I, I, I need to do, I need to get this project done um, to finish the 1770s close front robe la francaise. I need a new set of stays, so we're gonna do that. But I just wanted a task that I know that I can complete, that I can focus on, keep my mind off of other things, and just kind of take you around with me in a super casual way. This is not gonna be anything super historically informed. We're gonna do this all modern techniques. We're doing the red threaded 1780s day pattern because if you've been around here for a while, you know that red threaded products fit me really well. I don't need to do a mock-up. Famous last words, I know, but I'm not gonna do a mock-up. It's not happening. Uh, so we're just gonna do, we're just gonna make some stays and we're gonna do it on the Bernina. A little bit of hand sewing. We're gonna set the grommets. We are not doing hand sewn grommets today. No, 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 no. Um, we're gonna try to get this done in the next 12 hours um, before I have to face the music. So, wish me luck. All right, so while we're here, I thought I would just go through the materials that we're gonna be using today. Obviously, we've got our red threaded pattern, which has been printed, cut, and taped out really easy there's like five pattern pieces so nothing super difficult we've got our synthetic whalebone um, you can get this from Burnley and Trowbridge you can get this from Forsyth Supply you can get this from William Booth Draper this is from William Booth Draper just because their shipping is the most convenient for me um, then we also have plain woven medium white linen this is going to be for both our inner linings I am doing this in a slightly more historical way. Red Threaded does it with cotton coatil, which is, to that totally works. Um, but we are gonna do two layers of inner lining of this. And then we have this lovely fabric. This is a beautiful 100% silk jacquard with these lovely, like, large florals on it. Not quite sure which side I'm gonna use. I might use this side, yeah. Um, obviously not historical at all, but really fun and really beautiful. Got this um, when I was back home at a place called SR Harris. If you're ever in the Minneapolis St. Paul area, definitely check out SR Harris. They have two locations, um, one in the north part of the cities, one in the south part of the cities, um, and they have dead stock fabric there. So I got this, it was a remnant, it's a fourth yard, 100% silk for six dollars. So awesome deal. And then we also have our lovely grommets, which we will be using later. Hopefully not too late at night because my neighbors are gonna hate me. I started this project by creating the bias tape for the binding. I chose this cotton twill, which I've actually made corsets out of before. It was kind of way too thick for this project. Um, but you know what? It was the best color that, I, that the stuff I had in my stash. I was not going out to get any more fabric for this project, so I went with it. I chose to do two, a two inch binding, double folded bias, um, which was also a bit chunky. But I just rolled with it because again, as you will see in this project, I do a lot of that. I then cut out the pieces for the stays from one layer of just plain linen. I did decide to go with one layer instead of the two I said in the intro because I thought the two layers would be too thick, which is a running theme for this project. Next is the worst part of making stays, in my personal opinion, marking the boning channels. I did this with a ruler, a marker, and frankly, blind faith that this was all going to work. You can use a tracing wheel and such, but again, we're taking the path of least resistance. This is the longest step of the entire project, and it's important, but extremely tedious. Then I cut out the fashion fabric for the stays. This fabric was very, very lovely to work with. Um, very tightly woven, but also super gorgeous and was a real bright spot of the project. And it was time to start sewing. I started by sewing the front and side seam of both the linen and the fashion fabric. I decided to do this set of stays as a, like a pseudo bag lining instead of the full flat lining. 
that you would have seen um, historically with the sort of whipped edges. Although I did kind of flatline the back seam, which they had on the original red threaded pattern. I'm pretty sure it's for sort of being able to modify the set of stays, but to be honest with you, I probably should have not done that, but it's fine. I don't have a great explanation for why I did it. I then actually filmed ironing the seams. I do always iron things, but I guess today you get to see it. I then lined up the fashion fabric and the lining to make sure that the side back seam was all lined up. And because I cut sort of a wide seam allowance on the fashion fabric and not on the linen lining, again, don't have a good explanation for that. So I had to make sure that that seam on the fashion fabric matched up with the seam on the linen lining so that when I sewed the boating channels, nothing was off. Then for the next big step, sewing all those boating channels. I did this um, by machine, obviously, but I used my machine back stitches instead of hand sewing in the ends. Hand sewing in the ends would have made it look better because the sort of the chunky back stitches get sort of weird and clunky, especially when they stop in the middle of the stays. But remember, today we're going for speed. So did not have time to do the back stitching by hand, so I just did it by machine. Now it was time for the boning. I did use several weights of synthetic whalebone, just trying to use up what I had in my stash. The roll that I bought this last time around was super, super thin, which is great for historical accuracy, but when we're dealing with this red threaded pattern, it didn't make much sense. So I used the sort of medium thickness one, the medium width one um, for the majority of the stays, and then just filled in with that super thin one uh, when I ran out. I then ironed everything on a low heat to reduce that dramatic curve in the stays. This just makes it easier to sew, but when you wear them, they'll conform to your body shape. Then I attached the straps. Um, it is at this time I should have done a fitting, but I soldiered on instead because this was a no fitting kind of day. The straps it did end up being too long, spoiler alert. And then did the best and scariest part of the project, cutting the tabs open. The bias that I made on earlier then got clipped on with craft clips. I honestly think this is what craft clips were made to do. And if you aren't using craft clips for your machine zone binding on literally every anything, not just stays, you should really get on that. It will change your life. The bias got sewn on in a sloppy manner. I literally just lined it up and went over it once and I did end up having to go over some sections multiple times because I didn't catch everything in the first go. It was like 8 p.m. at this point. I just wanted to get these things done and you know what? I did and they look fine. They are going to be great. They're going to be fine and if you look at it from six feet away, you know, if you're keeping proper social distancing from me, you won't notice and that's fine with me, especially for a garment that's not really going to get seen much. So I'm really happy with what I was able to get done today. Stomacher is done and the stays are put together. They're bound. All the channels are done. All the boning is put in. So I think that was a successful day of sewing. Um, I still have a few hours before I need to get to sleep. But the last part of this project is of course setting the grommets and I'm giving my neighbors a bit of a break because it is Sunday night and I don't. I really think anybody needs loud grommeting sounds at like 10 o'clock on a Sunday night. All right, so in the new light of day, I think I'm actually pretty happy with these. The binding is not as bad as I originally thought. Um, I mean, it's pretty messy, but considering the amount of time I saved by doing it by machine, I'm happy with it. So next, of course, is this business. So we are gonna annoy some neighbors and set some grommets. And then I did set the grommets and I had no complaints from my neighbors. They probably just thought I was building Ikea furniture, even though I've lived in this apartment for over a year.
I hope you enjoyed coming along on this journey with me, this sort of distraction journey. But all in all, I think I got a good set of stays out of it. It's definitely going to look much better under the dress than my old set of stays. So without further ado, let's put on that dress. you can see this new set of stays has fully resolved the issues that we were seeing with the last set of stays there's no peeking out it's gorgeous I can have my full décolletage on show without any weird straps going on and my wonderful ridiculous hair trust me when I finally get some actual photos of this gown we will have a hair tutorial for that or I shouldn't say tutorial it's going to be a video of me attempting to do 1770s hair probably on myself so stay tuned for that in the coming months but again I'm happy with these stays they fit well except for the strap issue but it's my own fault um, they fit the dress well we do not have any weird business up here going on anymore I think it's a success I needed a win this week and so I'm taking this as a win. If you would like to see more videos from me, I am going to try to put out a video nearly weekly. I make no promises, I'm in grad school. So, you know, it, they come when they come. Just, just riding this together, frankly. You can of course subscribe to see when I post. You can like this video if you liked it. Uh, you can have a comment, put a comment down below if you have something to say. And um, I guess have a great day otherwise. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.